Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Only Land Fan Show. My name is Kendall Lejeune, and our guest today is Michael Balkum. Michael Balkum is an innovative and tenacious land flipper. After making a living flipping items at garage sales and mastering the art of poker, Michael found his true calling in the land flipping business. With just two years of active experience, he's already built out an extraordinary team and has a couple six-figure deals under his belt. Michael's expertise lies in building strong teams and executing creative deals that have consistently led to success in the land flipping industry. Adept at adapting to new trends and technologies, he's dedicated to constantly learning and growing his skills. Before his journey into land flipping, Michael had an array of experiences, from performing in musicals to being a Disney Dreamers Academy champion, a real estate agent, and an enthusiastic athlete. He also spent time as a gymnast, musician, and a pickleball pro for about five years. This diverse background has shaped him into the person he is today, equipped with a strong work ethic and a passion for helping others. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm doing great, Kendall. How are you this evening? Doing fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us. Again, you're back by popular demand. We're talking about a very exciting topic. It's one that is close to my heart. I know it's close to your heart. And today is a masterclass on crafting teams and forging success with virtual assistant teams, with VAs. And so talk to us a little bit about your background in the land business and what types of deals do you specialize in? Yeah, absolutely. So been in the land business a little over two years now, been in real estate for a little over 10. In the land business, I do a lot of different things now, Kendall. I'm very fortunate that I have an amazing team behind me. So we now primarily do texting for our outreach. We're doing some RVMs, getting back into mailing, and we just buy and sell. We flip, we'll double close, we'll do novations and all kinds of creative things. So we're having fun with it, done a couple of subdivides and looking forward to doing more and being as successful as you one day. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to keep up with you, so I don't know who's chasing who here, but <laughs> it sounds like you've got a fantastic, just wide range of experience in the land industry. And so when you first started your land business, were you a solopreneur? Or did you start with anyone else on your team? How did that look when you first started? Uh, this will blow your mind, Kendall. I have been having VAs since I was 19 years old. I'm 30 now. So I'm really used to having VAs around me. I had them when I was a real estate agent, had them when I ran pickleball groups. So at the time I got out of pickleball, transitioning out of that, I happened to have a land um, deal fall into my lap and made six figures. It was my first deal. And then during that time, a VA who was working for me, we we're always looking for creative ways to make more money. And he said, Mike, I actually found this coaching program that teaches people how to flip land. So if it actually wasn't for my VA, I actually would not even be in this niche now because wow. that one deal, I thought it was a one-off. I didn't think, oh, you can actually do this for a living. So yeah, wow, I, I owe it to them. <laughs> a virtual assistant got you into the land game. I love this. I love this. First of all, I hope that VA got a really nice bonus for that deal. That's incredible. Can you talk a little bit about who was your, once you decided, okay, I we're going to do this land thing. What types of roles did you put people in and what types of virtual assistants did you have in place on that very first team into your first foray into land? Absolutely. So I, as successful as I am, I'm also probably one of the most lazy, successful people you'll ever meet. I hate doing work. I like, I absolutely <laughs> do. So any chance I get, and some things I really hate is data. I'm good with data, but I just absolutely hate it. it. Drives me crazy. I do not want to stare at spreadsheets. So one of the first couple of things I did is hire someone to do my due diligence and all my data collection and prepping my mailers. Right away, that's step number one. They handle all of that. And then another admin person just to handle sifting through the letters when they come back, some more basic DD on it as the other person's creating new lists for us. And then I would just handle the calls. So data wow. is first thing I would hire out because... I am not good at it. It doesn't make me feel alive. It doesn't make me feel awake. I'm not excited to do it. Yeah. You got to, you, you have to st you know what your lane is and then stay in your lane and chase what gives you joy. So I love that. Now I am also not a data fan. And so I completely resonate with your story in, in getting someone to help with that. 
Now, you had someone helping with your with data, with doing some due diligence, doing some mailers. So what did that very first iteration of your land business look like? Was it you and one VA, you and two VAs? How, what did that look like? It was me and one VA for Excellent. the first 90 days into it. Yeah. The person who got me into it, it was him and I, which was really cool because him and I learned the business together. So I bought the coaching program, but it's, oh, we're going to watch this together. Oh, I hate this part of the business. You learn how to do this part. So. I love it. So I'm assuming if we're going to use some EOS language here, you are a visionary. Is that correct? I'm a textbook visionary as well. So recognize you from a mile away. <laughs> I can spot him a mile away. So you actually had an integrator as a VA, right? Which yeah. is so important. I love that. I love that. So if you're if you're a one person, a one man show, one woman show, and you're a visionary, this is testament that you can actually get an integrator to run some things for you in your business and that person be a virtual assistant. All right. Now, I'm assuming, though, that this virtual assistant was a really special virtual assistant. This is someone this wasn't just someone that you found off of Fiverr and 10 days later is, hey, let's do this land thing. Talk to us a little bit about that virtual assistant and what your experience and history was with that person. Mm, so that person, before we got into the land business, that person, his name was Edmund. Edmund was amazing. Absolutely phenomenal human being. Got him from, I found him from Upwork, sourced him from Upwork, got him off of Upwork, worked with me for about six months doing some e-commerce stuff. And then he found the land space. So we dove into that. He's a great person. He would shoot me morning emails, let me know what my day consists of. He is a fitness guru. He's a, he's big into Taekwondo. So he would make sure I'm staying healthy. He would send me workouts to do daily. If he knew I didn't go to the gym that day, I, he would really look after my well being, which was good. So I could perform at my best. And then we learned the business together and built it out. Wow. That is incredible. So you hear a lot about a lot of people approaching a virtual assistant as just like one cog in the wheel of the business where all they are doing is maybe just data entry. But this person, it sounds like you had a, a fitness coach, you had an executive assistant, you had an integrator, you had a business partner. This person is amazing. Is he still on your team anywhere? No, he is not. Unfortunately, after we'll get into it, I prepared a little something special for you and your guests tonight. But, oh, excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, we, unfortunately, I did the Peter principle on him and moved him up to a point that he could not fulfill. And then we had a lot of talks about and resentment. And then finally, we decided it's best to part ways. And he was just burning both ends, so to speak. And we loved each other to death. I trust him with my life still to this day. But eventually, we just weren't happy with each other and the work and what was going on. And we were both just working our butts off and not having fun anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. And again, it's so important. And I have to applaud your your insight and your perspective into, again, keeping that chasing joy kind of philosophy front and center and letting that sort of guide you. So you mentioned that you had a, uh, a little something prepared for us. Tell us what, what, what you have. I, so in lieu of this, because I love my team, I told my team I was doing this presentation tonight and they made a presentation for me to present because I'm also horrible at making presentations. <laughs> yeah. So I got some stuff to run through with you. If you all awesome. want to see it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Show us what you have. This being said too, by all means, feel free to stop me at any time. Ask me all the questions you want to. We can jump all around this. I want to be very candid. I am extremely passionate about the subject. This could easily become like a six hour long masterclass. So feel free <laughs> to just shine the flashlight my way. My time's running out. So... Gotcha. This is a very, very important topic, I think, for most land investors out there. I think that one of the things that we love so much about the land industry is that it can be done completely remotely. And that also means that if it is done remotely, then you're going to probably have some type of virtual employee, some type of virtual assistant. And so this is a topic that I think gives it gives everyone value. And so I'm super excited to check this out. Let's dive in. And take all the time, give all the value that you need, that you want to, because we're here for it. Careful, Kendall, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, so virtual delegation. So let's start talking about crafting teams and forging success with the VAs. I really love this to death. So first thing you might be asking, I guess we should first start with, 
Leverage is the key to efficiency in business. Virtual assistants provide that leverage. Gary Keller said this. For those of you who don't know who Gary Keller is, if you've ever heard of this small little real estate company called Keller Williams, he is one of the co-founders. Gary Keller is an amazing person, wrote some amazing books. I was a real estate agent for a while, so he wrote The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. He also wrote The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. Great book to read, but he really helped set this in motion for my life. So you might be asking yourself, why hire a VA? Why go out of the country if you can stay in the country? Or why not have somebody that's working at the office with you? A couple of things to point out with that is it's cost effectiveness. What a lot of people don't realize is your average doctor in the Philippines actually makes somewhere between $5.50 to $12 an hour. This is a doctor we're talking about. This is someone who you want to save your life. They make on average about six, seven bucks an hour in the Philippines. Wow. So yeah, it blew my mind when I heard that. So these are some things to keep in mind. Some people think I'm harsh for the price I pay my team. I pay my team very well. It's just their cost of living is very different. Also, it gives you scalability quickly and flexibility. You can quickly grow and scale. And these people will work around your time frame. You might not be in the position right now to hire someone full-time. You can hire them part-time. You can hire them a couple of days a week, things like that. And then really the benefits of it is you can get more things done. You know, you can focus on what's most important to you and you can access talent from all over the world. I think this is huge to me because I think it's so easy for us to get caught up on piddly task in the land business, really in any business in general. You know, I remember, I still fall into this trap. About four or five months ago, I spent all Saturday creating a Zapier integration and I was so proud of it at the end. And I'm like, why did I just spend eight hours on this? I could have paid someone 25 bucks on Fiverr to build this whole thing for me. Yeah, no, I completely get this. And you're so spot on. I I came into getting virtual assistance once I first started my first real estate business when I was doing, when I was wholesaling houses. This has been about 13 years ago now, but having a virtual assistant changed my life and not just the business, but like on the personal side of things too. And so ever since then, anytime I'm in a situation where I'm meeting someone and, and I want to give them value, or we have to share some type of what's a great life hack, I will say to anyone, whether you own a business or not, get a virtual assistant because they can literally change your life. There are so many things that they can do from ordering groceries to making sure that your bathroom supplies are stocked by ordering Amazon stuff, managing your calendar. There's so many different things that a virtual assistant can do to help your life. And it's such a great life hack and it's so affordable. So right there with you, Mike. Yes. No, I couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. I think everyone should have a VA. Everyone. Business or you have a W-2. Absolutely. Yeah. And the funny thing is most people that are not business owners, when I tell them that they're like, I, I don't know if I'd have enough stuff to have a virtual assistant do. And I say, okay, just give it a shot. Just hire a virtual assistant part-time for one week and then just start making a list of things that you can give to a virtual assistant. And I'm not kidding you. Within the next week or so, they find enough stuff for that virtual assistant to work full time. So there's definitely things out there in your life that you could be outsourcing to a virtual assistant. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, really. You always want to think of too, especially I know you come from the house space. I used to have a small portfolio of single family homes. I always want to be the real estate investor, not the real estate owner who mows his own lawn. There's things we should outsource so we can focus on others. And opportunity cost, I think is the biggest reason to get a VA for almost Huge. all aspects of your life. Yeah. And can you, for those of, of us who are listening, who may not know what opportunity costs are, can you give a little breakdown as to, to what is an opportunity cost? Yeah, absolutely. So opportunity costs, you face this every single day in your life. You're actually currently facing this right now. Right now you're listening to this phenomenal podcast. And the opportunity cost of this is you're getting golden nuggets that you can take back into your land business and any other business that you're in to make it a lot better. However, though, right now you could be cleaning your house and your significant other might be yelling at you an hour after this is over because you were not cleaning your house or you're being productive and doing both. So everything you do in life has an opportunity cost. So you could mow your own lawn when you own a single family rental property, or you could pay someone else to mow the lawn. And while they're mowing the lawn, you could be finding the next property you want to buy. So everything in life has its ups and downs and its different opportunities. So that's what your opportunity cost is. 
So if you're a doctor, you should probably be seeing patients. You shouldn't be typing in patient notes. You should just quick, quickly say it into a little recorder and hand it off to someone else to transcribe it for you. That was your opportunity cost. Yeah. And that's a huge mindset shift. I remember growing up, I always thought that, oh, people that have maids, those are like rich, fancy people that live in mansions and things like that. And they don't have to do that. They don't have to clean their own house. That's why they have a maid. But honestly, it wasn't until I got into owning business and knowing other business owners where I realized that, no, those people are not, while some of them, yes, they're doing it so they don't have to, it is a luxury. Many people that have housekeepers or house managers or anyone provide some type of service in their life, it's not because they don't have to do it. It's so they can actually be freed up to do higher paying activities. And so it's really, what is the value of your time, which is a huge mindset shift. It's really... It is really a, a business decision and not so much like a luxury whenever you are hiring people to help you run your life. All right. Love that. Love that. Let's keep going. This is fantastic. Terrific. All right. So you decide you're going to hire a VA. I think the next question you want to ask yourself is, are you trying to hire a strategic thinker or a task-oriented worker? I think this is an important distinction we want to ask ourselves in the business. Some people like to guide their own ship. They want to be in charge of it. They don't want anybody asking questions. They want to figure out how to set everything themselves. Other people want to be around a tribe and the tribe make the decisions together. So when I think about things like this, these are things you want to look for when you're hiring someone. Do you want someone who's a strategic thinker? This is someone who will help you build your business. This was like the first VA I had at Edmund for my business as well. He understood that we are about growth and our goals. They're involved in planning, brainstorming. They're going to bring ideas to the table. Okay. Then you also have just regular task-oriented workers. These are very important people. This could be someone like scrubbing your list, checking your traveling mailbox, if you use a virtual mailbox. A lot of day-to-day -day operations. I have someone on my team who does payroll. Payroll is really simple. It's just filling out an Excel sheet. It just takes time. I, for a long time, had the same person who would actually book my fitness classes. You can book them 14 days in advance. If you're not booking it, like right after your next class is over, it's going to fill up. You're going to be on a wait list. I never had this issue because it was their responsibility to do this. So those would be more of your task-oriented questions or task-oriented workers. So something you really want to think about is what kind of person do you want to bring on to your team? What kind of tribe do you want to create? Are you the dictator or do you have a board of directors or a little mix of both? One thing I will tell you with this is I have always had an issue with this. I always wanted to hire people that are hyper ambitious people that want to drive, that want the most out of life and all these things. And really that's not the best way to always look at it. Issues with that is A, people that are very driven are probably not going to stay with you that long because they're going to move on to bigger and better things, or they'll really want more of an important partnership with you to really build the business up. And also two, every company needs stability. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that person that wants to go to work, do their job, do the same job day after day, and then go home. And those roles are so important, especially in our land space as well. So keep in mind, we're going to have this nice niche of our thinkers and just our workers. And both of them are so important. Yeah, that's a really fantastic distinction. And I think that another thing to think about whenever you are considering who to bring on, what type of person do I need, is a couple of things. First of all, What's your management style? Are you someone that is a micromanager and that has to have things done exactly this specific way? That's going to be a certain type of personality that's going to handle that kind of thing. And that's going to work well. The other thing is, what phase of the business are you in? It sounded like when you were getting started with Edmund, that it was such a huge benefit to have someone that was a strategic thinker, more of an integrator to help you to create a lot of the, the systems and processes that you needed in your business versus if you'd have had just someone that's, let's say, a data, a data entry person, you would have to wear both hats and then just delegate that activity to that person. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more, Kendall. Hey, I got to say, Kendall, by the way, total side note here. Yeah. You have an amazing team. I feel like I'm taking the spotlight from you. Like you should be giving this presentation. I should be the student here. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, no, I have to tell you, first of all, my team is probably one of the best teams out there. I am so proud of every single member on my team. 
They handle my entire business, but all of my businesses, I have three going right now. They help handle my life. They really are fantastic. And I would be nowhere without my team. So this is another reason why I'm super passionate about this, because I know the value of having world-class people and uh, giving them world-class training and world-class support to help them to be even better at what they do. Yeah, I we're all about sharing the team love today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So next thing you might be asking yourself once you figure out who do you want to bring on your team is where are you going to source these people from? So you actually have a few different options here. You can go with an agency, a company, or you can find an individual. What I mean by this, and I may 100% have agency and company mixed up, but you all will understand what I'm saying here. When I say an agency, I'm thinking of someone like LearnLand. LearnLand actually offers to get you VAs. The nice thing about LearnLand's VAs is they're trained. They're ready to go. The downside to LearnLand's VAs is they cost a little more. They cost a little more because they're coming ready out of the box. There's no training you need to do. They were already taught on LearnLand's platform and they're very good, ready to go. So you could go with an agency VA right off the bat. You could also get company VAs. When I say company VAs, companies that just specialize in doing what you're doing, just really outsourcing this to another company like Landmasters or so. The good and bad thing about this is a lot of times your VAs will jump from person to person. So you do want to be a little careful with that. If you don't actually know the company intimately, you don't really know the kind of work you're going to get. And then your VAs will come and go. So your stuff will get jumped around. And then lastly, you can get an individual. I personally love to get individuals myself. They are going to be your cheapest. You're going to have the most flexibility with them. But with that too comes the hardest work because you have to do your homework. So not a horrible idea to just get a recruiter to get you an individual if you want to, if you can afford that, or you have to know how to do it yourself. And I will show you all how to do it yourself tonight. Love it. Very good. Next thing you want to think about is how do you want to pay these people? This is very important. Some VAs react very well with pay. It really depends on what's going on. So you have three different ways you can pay your VAs. You can do a commission's great for salespeople. Motivate them in sales. If you close this deal, if you get this under contract, things like that, you'll get X number of dollars. You can also do hourly is going to be your most common way to pay people. Most people need hourly pay. A lot of people are not good at sitting in the entrepreneur spot because our pay fluctuates so much, especially in the land business. You can have a six-figure month, and then the next month you don't make diddly squat. And then you can have a seven-figure month and things like that. So do keep those things in mind. A lot of people who you bring on will probably just want hourly pay. They need to be guaranteed something. And then you can also pay per task. Depending on the task that you're looking for, let's say you wanted somebody to scrub every single property individually one by one. That's something you could pay per task. I'll give you a dollar for every hundred properties you scrub or something like that. So you have a couple of different ways to pay people. This is going to depend on what your goals are, your business model, things like that. I actually use all three of these. At the end of this, I'll actually talk to you about exactly how I pay my team. Love that. And have you, let me ask you, Mike, do you, do you work with virtual assistants from multiple different countries or are most of your assistants from one country? Yeah, that's a really good question. My VAs are in the Philippines and Pakistan. Got right it. Yeah. So the reason why I ask that is because I've had experience with experimenting with different, different virtual assistants from different countries and compensation models. Something that I've found in my own business is that when you're talking about compensation, different cultures respond to different things as well. So there are some cultures that are much more highly motivated by making bonuses and making extra commission and other cultures are not. They are just more about, I want to get the hourly. And even when you provide hourly plus maybe like a bonus structure. So for example, in my business, Everyone gets a base hourly, but we also have bonuses. We have commissions for certain roles, but then we also have bonuses that are company-wide bonuses when we hit our quarterly goals or our yearly goals. And it's just so interesting to see some people, and it may be, it's a personality thing for sure, but I've also found that it is a cultural thing where some people are just like not super motivated about working to get an additional bonus. They're just like, yeah, I'm good with my hourly thing. And not that they're not motivated. It's just that 
they're more motivated maybe by um, doing just a really great job day in and day out versus being money motivated. So I think that's a really interesting observation for sure. Yes. No, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. With all this being said, let's get ready to hire someone. Let's do it. So you might be wondering, all right, Mike, you said companies, agencies, hiring someone ourselves. Where can we actually go to hire someone? A couple different platforms I like to use. First platform is onlinejobs.ph. This is going to be just for Filipino workers. This is a great site. You can find phenomenal talent here. A lot of my VA, a lot of my staff has come from this site now. I think it's a great place to go. Caveat, only VAs. Next place to go is Upwork.com. Upwork is amazing. You're going to have access to the whole globe, which is great. Upwork's minimum $3 per hour per task. Nice thing about Upwork is it's built in, so it'll actually do screen monitoring. So it'll take screenshots of the person, and then it holds the money in escrow as well. Downside to Upwork, because it's offering all these additional services, it costs more money. Upwork is actually going to double dip and take some money from you. On the front end, you'll have to pay more than your $3 an hour per your person, as well as on the back end, we'll be taking a little bit from your actual VA at the end of it. And then the last option is hire my mom. HireMyMom.com is actually just for U.S. workers, and it's actually for exactly what it sounds like, moms. It's actually to hire moms who have extra time, things like that around the house, and are looking for a job to help fit in that's usually part-time. A lot of times when we think of VAs, we always think of out of the country. But a VA does not have to be out of the country. VA just means virtual assistant. It's really just someone working remote. If you can afford it, I know a lot of people have had massive success with HireMyMom.com as well. Excellent. Yeah, really good. Nice. So now that you know the places that you can actually go post jobs and everything, the next thing is you want to set expectations. All right. You need to figure out what your KPIs are. Someone famous once said, what gets measured gets managed. I don't know who that famous person was, but I have not forgotten the quote. So yeah. shout out to them. <laughs> so I think this is very nice here. Because when you bring someone on, they need to know what to expect. So it should be like, hey, you need to analyze this many deals a day, get this many mailers ready, make this many calls, send out this many texts, whatever that looks like in your business, you should know that they should have a number, something that they can strive for. And this is also too a way for you to look back at their performance. Are they meeting the metrics you want? Because if you don't have something like that, then after them being there for a month, you can just, I think they're doing a good job. Or the person makes you really happy. It's always fun to be around them. So you feel good about them, but it comes to find out they're actually not meeting the goals that you need to, and your business is getting hurt. But oh my gosh, how great is it to talk to them? So <laughs> make sure you set some expectations. Make sure you set some KPIs in there. What my business looks like, I have KPIs for a lot of the different roles in my company. And then everybody in my company fills out an end of day report. It's very simple. It's on Google Forms and they just go through and they answer some questions. How many texts did you send? What was your average response time? How many calls did you make? How many did you connect with? How many deals did you analyze? Average response time? How many properties did you pull? Things like that. Contract sent, contract signed. So um, this is a great way to track it. It is something that when you're first starting out in the business, you're probably thinking, this doesn't really matter. Like this is pointless. This is stupid. Six months from now, you are going to wish you had those numbers. It is so nice to look back and be like, oh, okay. For every 5,000 letters I send out, I get a deal. For every 200 people I talk to on the phone, I get a signed contract. You want to be able to look at those in the future. So start now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I, I just want to hop on really quick and say that KPIs, any of my clients that are watching this, they know that they hear this probably once every day, right? Like KPIs, and this could be a whole different topic. We'll schedule another masterclass about KPIs at some point, but this is, in my opinion, what makes the difference between just being a deal shop and just doing random deals to actually running a business and having consistent deals and making sure that you are being intentional about your activities. Because if you don't have KPIs, like you don't know what's happening in your business. You just really don't. I remember I I had scaled up to multiple multiple six figures before I really dialed in my KPIs. And when I went back and retroactively started 
figuring out what my numbers were, it felt, we talk about opportunity costs. It felt like I had missed millions of dollars because I wasn't tracking this stuff. And this is what's going to show you like which levers to pull in your business, right? So huge. And again, if, you're, if your team is not living and breathing by the KPIs, we don't, we really don't know how we're doing. A hundred percent. So I good. I said it better myself. So going on from here, now that you have your expectations met, what's a day in the life of this person's job? This is something I highly recommend that you do. I want you to do this person's job for a day, for four hours, something like that, and write down exactly what they do. Make sure you include the tools you want them to use. You might be surprised at how many of these tools, because you are going to end up actually posting this day in the life. We'll talk about that in a second, but you'll be amazed at how many of these tools a lot of people actually know. The land business might be brand new to you. You might be six months into it or only a year into it. There's VAs that have been doing the role you want filled for the last 10 years. There's so many times that you'll hire someone that knows more than you. There's someone that knows map better than you do. There's someone that knows Canva. This is built on Canva. I've never made a Canva in my life. And now all my presentations are on Canva because I have an amazing team that can build stuff out. I don't know how to use this. I just know how to click the next button, luckily. And I <laughs> trained on that too. So do keep that in your mind. Write these out, write out the tools, write out exactly what their day will look like. This will really surprise you. My team gets together every morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And we just have a, how's everybody doing day? And then a quick catch up on everything. This is like five to 15 minutes. I cannot tell you before I used to do this, people are like, oh, I have to hop on a Zoom call every day. It's expected my camera's on. You actually want to see me? I didn't know that was part of this job. I can't do this. It's okay. Let's write these things down. Let's let them know what to expect. Yeah, that's so good. And the other thing that I love about this is that I'm a big believer in until you do it yourself, you won't really you won't really know what's good, right? You don't know what good looks like. And I borrow that from Alicia Jarrett. We just had a conversation about this. You have to know what good looks like in order to be able to manage that successfully. And so if you don't know yourself how to do certain tasks, or if you haven't done something, then you have no clue if the virtual assistant is actually doing it, if they're doing a good job at it, a bad job at it, if it could be better. So this day in the life, I think it's brilliant. I love this. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So we're going to take this and we're going to post this, the stay in the life after you write it all out. And then you have chat GPT edited a little bit. You're mm -hmm. actually going to post this on Upwork, online jobs, hire my mom, wherever you're going to. One little golden nugget with this, post it more than once, post it a different time of day, things like that will really help your response rate on that. And you really want to cast as wide of a net as you can here. With that being said, a bajillion people are going to apply. So the next trick to that is, I am a great assistant, and this is why. This is something I sneak into every single job description I write. I say, when you apply, please put in the subject line, I am a great assistant, and then tell me why I should hire you over someone else. This will get rid of 60% of the people applying because so many are mass applying and not actually reading the job. I love this, and this has saved me so much time. Is, if you take nothing from today, just, just do this. This will save you so much time recruiting, please. This is so important. It's so stupid and it's just so important. It's uh, so good. It's so good because this really is testing to see how detail oriented they are. We have mutual friend Ajay Sharma. Ajay shared a similar tool or trick with me is that when he was looking for an executive assistant in the job description at the very bottom, nestled in between two different paragraphs, he put, when responding to this email, let me know your favorite color. And so when people didn't have that color at the bottom of their email, it's that they're, they, they didn't read the whole thing and, or they may have missed details. And so that can tell you a lot about a person right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's huge. Absolutely huge. This is great. I love this. Oh, good. I, I didn't make it. I, no. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> no, that I am a great, first of all, this is shout out to your team because this is a, a fantastic uh, presentation, but I am a great assistant. This is, I love the strategy. It's, it's excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So with that too, after they fill that out, read their stuff, 
read their resume, see if they have experience. Experience is a double-edged sword. We'll talk about this a little bit more on the next slide, but just something for you to keep in mind. Next thing to keep in mind, this is important to me, can they easily be trained? Okay, so what I mean by this is I am not a huge fan of training people. I'm not. I love coaching people. I love motivating people. I don't want to teach you from the ground up. I want you, if it's like zero to five, I want you to be at like a one to one and a half before I step in there. I don't want to get you from that zero to one mark. So with that in mind, give them a simple task. Ask them to comp a property and then show them an amazing video from Kendall Lejeune on how to comp properties and see if they can then comp the property based on the video they just watched from Kindles. It's such an easy thing to do. And now you're gonna see, oh, is this person competent? Can they follow instructions? Can they figure things out themselves? I think this is great. And I really like to do this because I don't wanna spend hours of my time training someone. There's so much free material out there. I'd rather them get trained by YU, YouTube University. I can teach you everything. Hey there, land fans. If you're enjoying this episode and would like to see more episodes like this, please be sure to let us know by liking and subscribing below. Yeah, and this is massive. I, I just wanna I just wanna say really quickly here is that at least for me and my business, my management style is I want people that are going to figure it out on their own, right? Before coming to me with questions. And so I actually have a chart that's company-wide that shows like the name of the chart is, I have a question, what do I do? And it literally is an organizational chart that says, step one, look it up here. Step two, did this answer your question? Yes, great, go do it. If not, go to this person on the team, right? And so it, it trickles all the way down at the very bottom, it's Ask Kindle. Because when, you're, when you are getting so many people and you have so many people on your team, managing all of those people and answering those questions literally is a full-time job. And before I started, fig before I figured out that you want to help people as much as you can and answer questions because the better they are at their jobs, the better everyone else will be and the better your business will be. But my gosh, like when you are constantly answering questions about, oh, just Google this, right? That can completely kill your bandwidth and you might as well do the work yourself, right? And that whole seeing how they can figure things out. I actually put that in my job descriptions. I literally say, I will not show you how to do anything. You will have to figure it out on your own. And if that doesn't scare people away, then I know that they're at least open to that. Granted, when I do hire them, we do have a, a robust training program and we do answer their questions. But I want to weed out the people that want to use my brain and get paid for it, right? Use your brain and do the thing and we'll help and build on, on top of that. So this is fantastic. I love that. Give them a simple task, see how they do on their own. Yes. Once you do that, once you have whittled this down, we're going to go to the harder task. Ah, real task. Yes, kind of. This is my go-to task. What Kindle said, I could not believe more. I want competency on my team. That's like the number one thing I hire for over anything else is competency. I don't care if you know nothing about land. I don't care if you know nothing about real estate. If you are a competent individual who can think, who can understand things, who can learn themselves, you can come work with me. I know you'll fit in great because you'll learn it very quickly. What we do is not that hard to understand. It's hard to implement and execute, but it's really not hard to understand. So this is the task I give them next. So my go-to is, hello, please arrange for my wife and I to watch Barbie next Friday, 1-1-2024. Fun fact, next Friday is 1-2-2024, but we'll come back to that in a second. Mm. Then I say, find a suitable theater near zip code 34113 and select a showtime that allows us to cook a plant-based meal dinner at home by 6.30 p.m. Also provide a recipe and list of ingredients in the provided Excel sheet that I can make. I am a horrible cook. This task could be completed in less than an hour. Thank you and good luck. A couple of things I want to note here. For those of you listening, this Excel sheet is very simple. It just says grocery list, produce, and then about three rows down, refrigerated, three rows down, canned food, three rows down, dried food, and so on and so forth. So things I'm really looking for here, I said Friday, but then I gave Thursday's date. One of the biggest things I look for people on my team is, are you going to call me out? Are you going to tell me I'm making a mistake? 
Are you going to push me and not let me step on the snake? Or are you going to watch me step on the snake because you're scared to speak up to your boss? This is so huge to me. And I always want people that will call me out. If I'm about to make a colossal mistake, please let me know. I put this in here to right away understand what are they thinking? Are they just going to show me movies for Friday? Are they going to show me movies for Thursday or Friday and say, hey, I wasn't sure which date you meant. Are they going to message me first and say, hey, Mike, I saw you put one one in there, but this Friday is actually one two or things like that. Or really, now that I'm looking at the slide, are they actually going to say, did you mean two one or two two instead of one one? Because that's also 100% wrong. So these are things I will definitely look for. Are they going to call me up on that? Next thing. How deep are they going to go in their research? I gave a zip code here. The zip code, there's a theater about four minutes away. That's horrible. Horrible reviews. It's really not a great place to go. There's one that's six minutes away in the other direction. That's a really nice theater. Are they actually going to see this one has bad star ratings and actually pick the other theater for me? Okay. And then the last thing is I say, provide me a recipe for a plant-based meal. Something easy. I'm a horrible cook. I'm giving them context clues here. Are they just going to send me a food network URL? Are they actually going to say, hey, here's an easy recipe to do for beginner plant-based cooks? Are they going to send me a couple of recipes? And how well are they going to fill out this Excel sheet? I, the person who does a lot of my data now, filled out this Excel sheet, told me the local Publix I can go to. That's my local grocery store here in Florida. Told me the Publix I could go to and what aisle number everything is on. This is a person I want doing my data. This person knows what's up. All right. Just this is brilliant. That. This is brilliant. I love this. I love this so much. I am borrowing this immediately. I cannot like, oh, this is just so good. I'm geeking out over this right now because this will tell you so much about how that person thinks. And you're, you're just so right. You're spot on about, is this person going to call you out on it and say, Hey, you made, this is the wrong date. Or are they just going to say, he could mean this and he could mean this. I'm just going to give him all of the information that is, and, or is he going to message me? And that's something else. I don't want to be messaged. Just <laughs> send me what you think I meant. So it, that, this is fantastic. Thank you for this. This is worth cost of admission today. So good. Thank you. I, I want to kick back of everyone's cost, Kendall. Please. <laughs> you got it. You got it. We're going to do a profit share situation right. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Guys, you're about to hear a real life negotiation right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I love it. I love it. So good. This is amazing, Mike. Thank you for this. Of course. Of course. So you've had a lot of people go through this now. People have done the real task. There's a couple of them that have really stuck out to you. How do you know they're the right fit? Okay. A couple of things you can do here. One is... Do their skills and experience match really what you're looking for? Now, this does not have to be identical. Some people that you will hire for this might not come from the land space. They might not have any real estate experience calling before, but they have worked as cold callers in Comcast, Verizon, T-Mobile, Xfinity, all these other places. They were a supervisor for one of these for customer service, worked in a healthcare company being on the phone. Okay, that's good. Maybe they've never done due diligence for land per se, but they're actually a civil engineer in their country. Wow, that's amazing. These are different things you can look for to understand really what's going on. Are you looking for an executive assistant and she used to be a teacher? Okay, this is somebody who really knows how to plan out days to really set things up. So do keep that in mind. Do their skills match really what you want them to do? And what's their experience level? Now, I said earlier, experience is a double-edged sword. I love and hate when somebody has experience and I'm now to the point where I rather than not have experience in the specific thing that I want. The reason being is the way that my team does things might be completely different than how their other team used to do things. And it's a lot harder to retrain someone something than to just start from the ground up. Do keep that in mind a little bit. Reverse side of that, if you have very little experience in this, it might be great to hire someone who used to work on Kindle's team. But now you can just bring them into your team and say, wow, this person's amazing. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do this and they can do it phenomenally. So do keep in mind, double-edged sword there, but it's really up to you.
Anything before I go to personality fit, Kendall? No, that's just a really good, I think that's a, a really fantastic insight is, again, coming back to where are you in your business and what is it that you need the most? And just being super honest with yourself, do you need someone that can help you to create processes? If you're in the, if you're in the system and in, in the, the part of your business and the phase of your business where you're still developing processes and systems. And it might be great to have someone that came from a company that had processes and systems in place. If you're looking for someone that's going to be just a really good fit from a culture standpoint, and you're looking to get them acclimated to a fully fleshed out process and system, then maybe that first person might not be the very best fit because they're used to doing it a certain way and only that way. So that's a really good insight right there. Yes. Next criteria that is most essential for us, I say us because my whole team, is their personality. Personality is so important. We have, my buddy Brian's on this call. I love talking to Brian. I can talk to Brian for hours on end. He's been in real estate a while. I have two. It's probably not the best thing. I like talking to him so much because we'll end up killing a couple hours without yeah. doing our work. But you want someone like that. We, Kendall and I, we have mutual friends with Ajay. I love Ajay to death. I can talk to this guy for hours, all about the land business or about anything else in the world. Ajay is a near and dear friend. And I just, I get energized talking to him. I get excited. And then when Kendall texts me, it's, oh, here we go again. Here we go. Oh, no. <laughs> So keep that in mind. Do you yeah, want to hire sure. this person that you're like excited to work with? It's, oh my gosh, look at this. Kindle's text me. Let's go, baby. I'm excited. Or is it like, oh, here we go again. Gloria wants to talk. Okay. What question does she have today? It's just going to be so much harder that way. So I think personality fit is huge. I think personality fit is so huge. I stole this from Callan, our good friend, Callan. Love Callan. Graham. Callan's the best. Yes. 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 I know. Even if she is stealing all our land deals. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Callan, huge player. Highly recommend following her, listening to her. She knows her stuff so well. She's great at building out teams. She actually presented this in a group we were in one time. And I've stolen this and used this in my business. This is an Enneagram personality test. Free to do online. It's a popular psychology test. And it'll tell you what kind of person um, your employee is, and you can do deeper research on it to understand how it is to work with that person. Two of them I actually have written down here. Um, my executive assistant, Amy, the one who made this amazing presentation, um, she's a number one on here. She's a reformer. So the description of that would be principled, purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionist. Her key motivations are wanting to be right, to improve everything, to be consistent with their values, to justify themselves, and go beyond criticism. As an employee, they may have high standards and can be critical. Value, integrity, and hard work. Look for guidance and feedback to ensure they're on the right path. And then how to take care of them. Give them space to work independently. Provide clear expectations. Offer feedback and recognize their effort. And remind them that they need to have work-life balance. Okay? Encourage breaks and relaxation to avoid burnout. How great is it to hire someone on your team and know exactly how to treat them right off the bat? How great is it to know, okay, we're in a team meeting. Kendall's really stepped up. I want to call Kendall out and be like, Kendall, this presentation you did was amazing. Where Ajay, I won't want to call him out because he doesn't like being in the limelight. Like these are things you want to look at and it can just make you that much more of an effective leader. It will also let you know, will this mesh well with your team? Does their personality fit into the role that they're going into? You know, my acquisitions outreach manager she used to just be my texture she's an achiever after i read this i was like blown away you know as an employee they're goal oriented may be competitive can become workaholics desire for recognition and success and you should recognize their accomplishments and provide opportunities for growth that's great before she just texted i realized this i'm like i need to do so much more i put her in the seat like hey build out her whole acquisitions process she's like we're going to start doing rvm so i'm like oh Okay, what's an RVM? She's like a ringless voicemail. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And she learned how to build that out. She learned how to build out the flow we are now using. Put people in these seats and they will blow you away. But you need to see if they have the personality for that seat.
So good. So good. I use the Enneagram test as well with, with applicants, that anyone that applies to a position in my company, I have them do an Enneagram test. What's your Enneagram number, by the way, Mike? I am a number eight. You're an challenger. eight. Challenger. Yes. Ooh, very good. Very good. I'm a seven. I'm the enthusiast. Awesome. I love this. I love this. Yeah, I've talked with Callan many times about the Enneagram numbers and everything, and it just works. It's cool. You might look at this and be like, oh, this is a little woo-woo, but this is, this. The, it, it works. That's all I can say. It works. This is great stuff. Yes, I will say I've gone to the point in this where everyone's Enneagram numbers is public on um, our team's page. Wow. So everybody can see how everyone else should react. So this way, everyone knows how to treat each other. They say treat each other the way you want to be treated. I don't think that's true. I think you should treat others the way they want to be treated. And this will let you know that. Interesting. That's good. Very good stuff. Love it. Thanks, man. All right. So next, hire slow, fire fast. Okay? Yes. Yes. It's time. You've... <laughs> I love it, Kendall. I, I know you've been in the seat that I've been in and what we're going to talk about here. So... <laughs> Look at their uh, work, bite the bullet, and hire them. Maybe even hire two of them. Have them do the same work. Compare it in the next two weeks, pick the winner, make it a race, okay? Keep in mind that so many people you bring on are gonna over-promise and under-deliver. It's okay. It's just the way it is, all right? It's okay to move on from there. With that being said, a little golden nugget for everyone, record everything you do with them everything. Anything you teach them, record it. Any questions they have when you hop on a Zoom call together or you make a Loom video or whatever, save it, record it. Because inevitably your team is going to leave. Your people are going to move on to bigger and better things, or you're going to move on to bigger and better things. They can't keep up or anything else. It's so great if you can just hand them all those recordings now. The stuff that you're doing, if right now you're listening to this and you're thinking, Mike, I'm not to the point in my life where I need a VA. I can't afford a VA, this and the other. Totally fine. Whatever you do for your business right now, record it yourself. What's better than, hey, this is me picking an area, making a mailer, everything else. You record it, then you can hand it off to them. Now, one thing I want to say with this, hire slow, fire fast. Most people shine right away. Okay? Most people, if they're amazing, they're going to be amazing in the first two weeks. If they're not, very rarely do they break out of their shell. Now, I know, it, I'm sure you feel the same way too, Kendall. We love people. We want to make people better. I'm a motivator. Kendall's a motivator. We want the best out of people. It probably drives some people around us crazy, but even people on my team, I know they can do better and I believe in them. And I'm like, they're going to get there. I know they're going to get there and everything. Wrong attitude. This is your business, okay? You're not a ginormous company. You're not Amazon with a bajillion people working for you. All right, you're a small business where every person who works for you is so crucial and important. Stop hoping they get better. Bite the bullet and let them go and get somebody else. All right, this is a challenge, but it's so important. We talked about Edmund a lot in the beginning of this call. I love Edmund to death. He Peter principled out in my business. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. It took me four months to let go of Edmund. The day that I did was one of the biggest reliefs for him and I both. He loved me so much and I loved him to death. We trust each other so much. Even though he wanted to quit, he never would because he cares about me, respects my business. I had to eventually let him go and it was, thank you. This is what I wanted. This is what I needed. Okay. We believe these people can get better. We work with someone and it's okay. We hopped on a zoom for an hour and a half. They're going to get better. And they don't, and they don't, and they don't stop believing they can't get better. You're probably right. They probably can, but you don't have time to waste. You have an empire to build. You have a business to build, build it. Yes. This needs to be engraved on something in your office. And you need to be looking at this every single day, hire slow, fire fast. So important. So important. And it's really funny because I had a, a team member who they were working on some of my some of my social media content. And I actually put out a reel on higher, slow, fire, fast. And this was this person's one of the this was during the first week. And she contacted me and we were doing one of our meetings. And she said, so I saw that reel 
She's like, wow. And I said, what reel are you talking about? Oh, the higher, slow fire, fast reel. Said, oh yeah. Every word of that. And she was like, wow, really? I said, yes, really. And that little question, wow, really? Like that kind of stuck with me. I was like, is that a potential red flag? She was gone two weeks later. Higher, slow, fire, fast is so crucial. And I'm going to bring it back to that opportunity cost thing that you were talking about earlier. If someone is not producing on your team for every, for every day that they're not producing, you're, you are literally losing money. So you are paying someone a salary for your company to lose money. When there are tons of people out there that will be just the, the opposite, you will get an ROI on their salary and higher, slow, fire, fast. I love the idea of hiring two people. And so that way they're competing with one another and just say, hey, listen, we have a, a probationary period. This is the way that we work. I've hired two people. And so whoever outcompetes the other is going to be the person that will move forward after month one, right? That will show you a whole different aspect to people. And so I really love that. Don't waste time in your business. You have, like you said, you have an empire to build and we, we can't waste time in that endeavor. So this is music to my ears. I love this. Yes. Now with this being said, I've talked about this a bit. A lot of people on my team have seen these presentations, how I talk about this. They're all scared of me, especially when they first start working for me. So with that being said, do keep in mind, oh, I still thought we were on another slide. I'm leading up to this great transition and I guess the slide was- <laughs> That's all right. Go with your transition. We'll just envision it as you speak. Yeah. Oh, okay. So with that being said, VAs are people too. All right. As Mike Robbins once said, for teams and organizations, it takes real commitment and intention to create environments that allow people to feel safe enough to bring their whole selves to work. This is so important, okay? VAs are people too. I am tempted to get shirts made of this and send around because I am blown away at how I see other business owners treat VAs or treat their staff. You want to encourage unique perspectives, value their diversity, value their background, look at the experiences they have had with other teams, with other jobs, bring that in. Try to really create an environment where they feel comfortable to share new ideas. Granted, they probably have ideas that are so great you can't even think of them. They are in the trenches every day doing this role. They know how to innovate it better than you might. So do keep this in mind. But you want to make sure you're caring for your team. You're making a supportive atmosphere for everyone on your team. Okay? This is very important because my team, and I know this sounds like corporate mumbo jumbo, I tell my team I love them. I do. They are my family. It. It drives Melanie, Melanie is my girlfriend. It drives her crazy because at the end of the day too, she's like, oh, let's talk about work and everything. I'm like, I'm exhausted. I've been talking to my team all day. I love them. I've shared all these stories. Like, I don't want to talk. I want to sit back and relax now. I think it's so important to know what's going on in their lives. I can tell you who on my team right now is feeling sick. I can tell you Jeremy's going to a wedding tomorrow. Joyce is feeling sick. Alizi and Amar are going on a pilgrimage right now and they're in Saudi Arabia, something they've dreamed about their whole lives. Okay, I know so much going on with my team and their culture and their lives, and we talk about ourselves. VAs are people too. VAs are humans. Be with them, care for them, treat them as real people. With this being said, you still have to look over their work too. A VA is not the end all solution for everything. So do keep that in mind. I see a lot of people hire VAs and then they focus on everything else in their business and they totally forget about that. You still need to have checks and balances, whether it's you or it's someone else on your team. But please love your people, love your people and they will love you. Create this environment, create this support. They'll stay with you forever. I have, I've had people on my team who were working for another investor at the time who the other investor would pay more and they quit working for that investor to come stick with us because they said, I feel at home here. You actually care about me. You actually ask how my weekend was and dive into it. You actually ask about like holidays we celebrate here and what's going on. I have a family channel. We use Discord to communicate. I have a family channel. If you're traveling somewhere or you're with your family, take a picture and post it. We want to see it. I think it is so important and enough people do not value this enough. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that this is really important. And 
I think that you can also, when you're, and I'm sure we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but when you're creating a work environment, like what type of culture are you creating? What are you doing to create that? I think it is so important that people feel safe enough to be able to express their ideas. I also build out an expectation that you're going to express an idea. So like the expectation is that you're going to come to the table with different ideas on how to improve this process. Like we're constantly talking about that. So it's not just you show up, you clock in, you do your work, you clock out. No, I want to know what are you thinking about the process? Is this a good process? Let them know that you're open to having their ideas impact the business. And I think that goes a really long way as well. So VAs are people too. We can't forget that this is a people business, whether you're dealing with customers or clients, buyers, sellers, your team, we're all people and we all want to be loved on and we all need to be supported and we all need to grow. And so I love this. This is a really important topic. Yes. Couldn't agree with it more. All right. I'm going to stop talking about it because I can go into it way too much. <laughs> we'll have you on for part two, maybe, where we'll just talk about people and KPIs. Let's do it. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Couple of mind, you know, you're going to hire a VA time differences. If you're hiring in the Philippines, for example, the Philippines is exactly 12 hour time difference right now, right now for Kendall, I know it's 7 PM central time in the Philippines, it's 7 AM their time. I, I don't know what time zone that is, but it's 7 AM their time. So do keep this in mind. There are time differences with them. With that being said, at least Philippines, especially most people there are used to working American time zones because a lot of the country does that. So it's not that big of a deal, but just do keep that in mind a little bit. Another thing is celebrations. Depending on where they are in the world, they might have different celebrations. They have different cultures, different things that they do. So you do wanna keep this in mind. I made it really clear with my team. I said, look, it's very simple. You can take off American holidays, or you can take off your country's holidays. I don't really care which one, I just need to know which one you wanna do. And they all decided to take off their country's holidays, which makes a lot of sense. They want to celebrate with everyone else in their country, which is great. When everybody's off on Labor Day in America, guess who's calling you up on the phone? Hey, you want to sell your land to us? Okay. Now, granted, too, we, of course, give them off Christmas, Thanksgiving. We're not going to be too <laughs> bad. But do keep this in mind. They are going to have different celebrations, different cultures. So another thing, too, Peter Principal, I've talked about this. But for those of you who don't know what Peter Principle is, it's when employees, they tend to get promoted based on their competency and their current role rather than their ability, their abilities for the relevant intended role. So as a result, we promote employees until they reach a level that they're incompetent at. This is exactly what happened to Edmund. I know we circle back to him. I haven't talked to him in a year. I'll have to send him this podcast. Edmund was with me almost two years. Edmund was amazing. He knew the whole business inside and out. It was incredible. And then we hired more people. And then we hired more people. And then Edmund was supposed to be in charge of these people. Or Edmund was supposed to make sure the DD was getting done. And now these things were falling apart. And then you come to find out Edmund is an amazing employee if you're micromanaging him. Edmund's an amazing employee when you spend the three, three to four hours a day on the phone with him. He's phenomenal if you're working side by side. He wants to be a business partner. It's hard for me to grow a business partner there because he's in the Philippines and we're moving on to bigger and better things. So please do be careful with the Peter principle. It is real. It can happen. It's happened to me. Absolutely. I literally am going through this right now. We had someone on our team that has been with us since the beginning, since the very, very beginning. And as the company has grown, I like to promote from within my company before I start looking at other places. And so this person has served many roles and it's just now got to the point where what he was originally looking for when he started is no longer available as an option in, in our company and so working through that. But the, gosh, this is so important. This is really good stuff to keep in mind. Yes. So with that, little golden nugget for you all. Kindle was talking about this. I love that Kindle has a, if you have a question, this is what to do. Kindle has a flow chart question. What I have in my business is if you have a question, first of all, go to chat GPT. That's what I actually tell my team to do. 
don't bother me with the question. Go bother technology with the question. Yes. If you still don't know the answer, then we use the 131 method for my team. 131 is from Dan Myers, Buy Back Your Time, great book. What that means is one, number one is what is the question, okay? So come to me with your question. Three is come to me with three potential solutions. And your ending one is tell me the solution you think is best. So that is a great way to build your business. If you can't think of three solutions, again, go to ChatGPT to think of three solutions. This has really helped out my company so much. We've had times before where we think a property will sell for 50,000. My team knows we want to buy it for like half of market value at 25. And then the person won't budge off of 30,000. So, okay. Problem is they want 30,000. We're not getting 50% of market value. What are three possible solutions? Solution one, take it. $20,000 spread still nice. Solution two, see if we can structure some kind of creative deal with them or maybe do a term deal. Solution three, walk away from it. Now, what do you think the best solution out of those are? And they tell me, this is amazing because this does what we call upward delegation. They start taking care of themselves. I cannot tell you how many times on my team, when I first implemented this, they hated it naturally. But now when somebody comes to me with a question, my immediate response is, what's your one, three, one? So many times they now tell me, oh, I figured it out, Mike. Don't worry about it. Great. Don't take up my time. I hired you not to take up my time. So this is so important and crucial. I think every business should really do this. And it teaches people to think. I love this so much. Oh, I can't even tell you how much I love this because so we have something similar. You are not allowed to come to me with a question unless you have a potential solution. So if you're just asking a question, that that's not going to cut it. I need you to say, hey, this is the issue that I'm having. This is what I think we can do. This is the solution. Even if you have no clue, come up with something. That way I can then give you feedback on your thought process behind it. And so you're right. It's teaching them how to think. But I am going to expand. I don't want just one solution. I want three. And then I want you to pick the best one. That is gold. So good. Because otherwise, you really will be inundated with people that the minute they hit a snag and a roadblock or they reach the end of their knowledge, they're just going to contact you and say, hey, what do I do? And if you give them the answer, you're training them to come to you as the source. And now you're doing their work and they're just putting, they're, they're just typing in the answer, right? So you want people that are going to be solution based and figuring out the, the solutions to these problems. And this is... Oh, golden nugget is the word for this. This is amazing. This will change your business, people. 100%. 100%. Ah, so good. So good. All right. So we've been talking about all these amazing things with VAs. I got to tell you all, it's not rainbows and butterflies. There are downsides to VAs. And I think it's only right if I tell you about that. And I also don't own a VA agency service, so it's not like I'm really pitching you on this. But... <laughs> Downsides to VAs, internet issues, okay? A lot of these places, the reason you're getting them at such a low rate is often because it's not a first world country. They're not as developed as us in the States, so they might have internet issues. They might have weather issues. The weather that's going on here is very different than weather going on there. So do keep that in mind. Also too, this has never happened to me. I think this has not happened to me so much because of company culture that I create, but I have heard of this happening to other people is their VA just goes ghost. They just don't show up to work, never respond to an email, never respond to a text, never respond to anything. They just disappear. So that can happen, okay? And obviously you can't just really drive to their house and say, hey, Kendall, are you okay? Are you sick? Is something going on? You just lose them forever, not really knowing what happened. Another thing is they didn't grow up with English, okay? When you tell a VA, oh, you got this call, break a leg. Man, why do you want to hurt me, Mike? <laughs> they don't know what this means. You knocked it out of the park. You're like, oh, I, I don't play baseball, Mike. But it's just like yeah. all these things, you want to keep that in mind. A common one in the Philippines, for any of you, if you ever call Comcast, Xfinity or anything else and you get transferred to someone, they have this slightly native language that's going on. They're probably Filipino. Notice when they say bye, almost every Filipino says bye for now. They don't just say bye. Nobody here in the States says bye for now.
but yeah. so many people in the Philippines buy for now. So yes, in mind. this is that. huge. This is huge. And I, I do want to, I do want to share this with you is that especially if you're working with a virtual assistant that is going to be outward facing and doing calls for you and working with you. It's really important that you speak with them in the hiring process, that you're really comfortable with what their English sounds like, that they're competent at, at speaking that. And be mindful as well with who are you going to assign to reach out to certain types of sellers. And what I mean by that is if you're working in a market where the majority are older people, they're not going to be super comfortable with being able to break down a like a strong dialect or if they can't hear it or understand it, they're just going to be confused and a confused mind always says no. So that's something that that's super important, but also what you're talking about with these little sort of nuances in the language, and this is something that I've had to train every single virtual assistant that I've had from the Philippines that's outward facing, is that when they talk about land specifically, they will say, are you interested in selling your lands? Like L-A-N-D-S, right? So they don't say lots, they say lands. And while that might sound really super small, if you are a land business, there is no bigger red flag that you can wave around than calling something lands. So are you interested in selling your lands? Do you have lands for sale? That immediately sends up so many red flags for people. So understanding what are the common things that they're going to be talking about and making sure that they understand exactly. It may be super small. I may sound super small, look super small on paper, but it is huge whenever you are the expert in something that they use the correct terminology, right? Absolutely. And the last thing I would say on this too is they respect you too much. This is very common in the Philippines. I know this might sound weird. The first VA I ever had, I'm 19 years old. He's in the Philippines and he would call me Sir Mike. Yes, Sir Mike. Right away, Sir Mike. Yes. They are taught impeccable manners in the Philippines. They will call you Sir. They will call you Mr. They will call you Ma'am. They will call you Miss. Oh, it drives me crazy. Dude, just call me Mike, please. <laughs> I just, I'm like, you're calling me Sir Mike. You have a wife, four kids. You're in like your mid forties. Like I'm supporting like this just feels so weird. So keep that in mind. They'll respect you too much, but also too, some of them might respect you to a fault in a way of they might notice something wrong with a property, but they're scared to say it to you. There was my buddy, Andy Roos, actually a land investor as well, sent me an interesting article recently and actually broke down how much every single ethnicity follows hierarchy. How much do they listen Ooh. to hierarchy? This actually came out, I forgot the book that it was, but South Korea actually got banned from flying in the US because South Korea really listens to hierarchy. So what would happen is the co-pilot would tell the pilot, hey, there's a mountain in front of us. And the pilot would say, there's no mountain. And the co-pilot would say, okay, there's no mountain. And then boom, they crash into a mountain and everybody dies. So this got so bad, they actually banned them from flying in the US for a while. Then they ended up getting a business consultant to see what was going on. And the issue was South Korea has so much respect for their hierarchy that if somebody's above them, whatever they say goes. A lot of this is true in the Philippines as well. Because of this, they're sometimes scared to speak up. They're sometimes scared to say things to you. I, I have a couple of people on my team that are leaders on my team. And so much of my staff is happy to go to them with problems than to me directly because I'm the big, scary boss. So do keep this in mind, okay? Encourage them to come with you. Encourage them to come to you with issues, with problems, and hopefully solutions too. But make sure that they don't respect you to a fault because they will, and it will damage your business. That's really good really good insight. So with all of this, I'm going to tell you about some systems I'm using in my business. All right. You hired somebody. This is great. Now what? This is what? Organizational tools. I told you before we do end of day reports. We do that on Google Forms. This goes into a Google Sheet. This is a great way to do it. We use Gmail. We use Google Workspace. And of course we use Zoom. Like how we're on Zoom right now. I am with Kindle. What I love too is the second I hopped into this call, Kindle immediately pressed the record button. 
I know this is something he's already saving. If this was a training tool or he brought on a business partner in the future that needed to hire VAs, he can just say, hey, I had this call with this guy named Mike. If you want to call me Sir Mike, I wish Kendall would. No, <laughs> but I had this call with him, listen to it. Okay, so we use this. We absolutely love this. Yeah. And Zoom is fantastic. I know that probably everyone is used to using Zoom at this point, but there's a, there's literally a feature that you can check a box where it will automatically record every recording that you have. So you don't have to, because I am terrible at remembering to record stuff. I've had full meetings where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great stuff. And then I realized I didn't hit the record button. So now <laughs> we have all of our Zoom recording meetings to be set to record. That way we have everything. And the great thing is you can turn those into transcripts. Those are now training tools. Those are different materials that you can use in your company. So highly recommend that. Yes. Next tool I'm going to show you. A couple of different companies do this, but the company I use, it's called privacy.com. Privacy.com is actually for making virtual credit cards. You can link it to your bank. And then what it'll do is you can create cards. The nice thing about this, a lot of people ask me, Mike, I'm scared to hire a VA. Aren't they going to steal all my information? Aren't they going to steal my identity? Aren't they going to open all these lines of credit? I hear it all the time. We're going to go over a couple of things to keep you safe in that regard. One of them is privacy.com. I love it. It's free. You can pay for a pro account, which is like 10 bucks a month, gives you 1% cash back. You can create virtual credit cards on here that'll pull right from your bank account. You can have multiple bank accounts set up, name the credit card, whatever you want to, and you can put a limit on it, whether that limit is per month, per year, per transaction, a single use card. Okay. The nice thing about these cards is this is what's called a merchant account. What that means is if I gave one of these cards to Kindle and then he paid money to buy land ID, formerly known as MapRite, then he could now only use that credit card for land ID in the future. The place that it's used to spend money on the first time, it's locked there for life now. This is a great thing to do. This is also, side hack, this is a great thing to do every time you sign up for a 14-day free trial that makes you put in a credit card. Make yeah. a silly virtual card, put a dollar on there, sign up for it, fill in the credit card information. You don't have to remember to cancel in 14 days. Yes, I love that. I love that. So good. Yes, this is huge. What's also nice about this is I probably have about $800 that my executive assistant has on a couple of different credit cards. If I'm away, if anything's going on, if the sky is falling, if the business really needs something right now and the majority of the team agree with it, she has the authority to just buy it. Don't come to me. Run stuff yourself. So I absolutely Excellent. love privacy.com. So good. You might be thinking, how do I pay them? If you use an Upwork, don't worry about it. Upwork will pay them. If you're not using Upwork though, you will have to pay them somehow. I use Remitly. Remitly is how I pay everyone. You might be thinking, well, Mike, what if they don't have a Remitly account? That's totally fine. Remitly is set up to source to almost every country you can imagine. So whether I'm paying people in Pakistan or the Philippines, I use Remitly. Whether they're in Africa, whether they're in Asia, it doesn't really matter. I use Remitly. The way Remitly set up is it'll pull right from my bank account or I can use a credit card and then it will pay the person the way they want to get paid. For example, in the Philippines, most people in the Philippines like to get paid with what's called Gcash. Gcash is the equivalent of Venmo or PayPal for us here in the States. Okay. Remitly will pay them through Gcash or they'll pay them through Maya. Both of those are like mobile money. They can also put it right into their bank account, no matter what bank they use. Same thing in Pakistan as well. Same thing in almost every country. So I really like to use Remily for that reason. A couple of other options you have, wise.com. I know a lot of people that use that. Payoneer.com. I know people that use that. And then PayPal. PayPal is bottom of the list because PayPal fees are just through the roof now. But you can still use PayPal too. That's great. Other things too. Own Gmail. I cannot stress this enough. If you message anyone on my team, it will be their name at mycompaniesname.com. Everybody has their own personal Gmail. Okay. It's part of workspace and everything. This is nice. You notice when Kindle sends you a message, it's Kindle at only land fans. The nice thing about this is if I worked for Kindle, then I would probably own Mike at only land fans. If I went rogue or Kindle had to let go of me or anything else, all he has to do is delete Mike at OnlyLandFans 
and I don't have access to anything anymore. This is huge. A lot of people like to give access to their VAs with their VA's own personal Gmail account, or sometimes worse, they'll just give them access to their Gmail account to log in on these different platforms. The thing about that is you have all this account security you need to worry about. A lot of platforms, you can actually go on to them, and Gmail's one of them. If you forgot your password on Gmail, it'll say, what was the last password you had? You might be thinking, oh, I can actually fire this person, just change the password. My person now can just go back in there and be like, eh, I forgot my password. Oh, but it was changed yesterday. This is what it used to be. Now they're hacking into an account. Do this to protect yourself. You can also use password protections like LastPass, um, Zoho Vault. That's what I use personally. There's like a bajillion of them out there. But please try to protect yourself. And I think one of the easiest way to is give everyone their own personal email account. Absolutely. Now, this is great. And what it, you said you mentioned, which one do you use? I use Zoho Vault. Zoho Vault. Cool. Yes. Other things too, communication. We talk through Gmail, Discord, and WhatsApp. WhatsApp is actually the number and way for communication for the rest of the world. Okay. It's a nice way to catch somebody if they're not at their computer or anything else. Besides that, we use Discord for pretty much everything we do. I love Discord. It's a lot like Slack. You can create different channels and things like that. We have channels for issues. We have a family page. We have funny things going on. And we have a leadership page and stuff like that. And then, of course, Gmail, just because everybody in America emails back and forth. So if you're talking to realtors, title companies, anything else, we, of course, source that through email. Some other things, too, we have going on. We use Clockify. Clockify is how we track their hours. Clockify is free. You can pay for a higher expensive service, of course, but I use the free version. Also, Screenshot Monitor we use. You can have two free Screenshot Monitor employees per account that you have. The nice thing about this is Screenshot Monitor every 15 minutes is just going to capture a picture of their screen. What's nice about this is... And I tell my team too, I don't like to do this because I really don't. I really like to respect their privacy. But the truth of the matter is I've hired people before in the past that were actually working two jobs at once. I've hired people before that they say they're doing one thing and they're just totally doing something else. It's like you clocked in eight hours, you analyzed three properties today. What'd you do? Oh, those were really hard to analyze. Really? Because it looks like you're on Facebook for six hours of the day. Let's just be real here. So screenshot monitor is something we use for that. Just to snap a picture of their screen every 15 minutes. Clockify is what we use to track their time. You might be thinking, Mike, why don't you screenshot monitor to clock their time if it is tracking their time? The reason is if someone's on the phone with someone for more than 15 minutes, they're not moving their mouse. So screenshot monitor will think they're not working, even though I can go back into my CRM and be like, oh, they're on a call with somebody for 40 minutes and I can listen to it. So that's why we actually use Clockify to make sure to track their hours. That is really good. You mentioned something about working for other people. I think that is something that we see a lot in the virtual assistant space is that there will be many virtual assistants that will double dip. And, and so they'll have, even if you hired them full time, they will be working for two or three different people all at the same time. And so that's something really important that whenever I am, when I'm interviewing people for positions and things like that, I want to make sure that you are the only, I am the only person that you're working for. There are other people that will allow that and that's great. But personally for me, I like to make sure that I have that full person's attention. That way, if I want to give them more tasks or if I want to give them more hours or a higher position, I know that they'll be able to take it on. Absolutely. I cannot agree with you more on that. So a couple of things about my company's culture core values, and team care. First of all, we have an accountability chart. I think this is huge. This is actually our internal accountability chart. So the nice thing about this is now everybody knows who to report to if they have a question. Kindle has a if question, then this flow chart. I have an accountability chart. This is who's in charge of what, who's head of what department, who are the leaders on my team, who are the people below them, how does everything work and operate, and what's their role. So I think this is a really nice thing to do. It's broken up into sales and marketing, operations, and finance. If you're wondering where I got that from, Kindle actually alluded to it earlier, stole it directly from Traction. Traction by Gino Wickman. I think it's one of the best books anyone can read to become a better entrepreneur and understand systems and processes. I do run my business on Traction. 
Okay, it embraces the EOS model. That's the entrepreneurial operating system. What's so nice about traction is it really helps you get a vision. Um, you should already know what your vision is, but it'll really help you put it down on paper. So that way everyone on your team understands the vision. That way everyone's hundred percent on board and headed in the same direction. So important. It'll also help you understand whether you have the right people in the right seats. I love traction to death. I cannot talk about it enough. And I think everyone should read it if you want to really have a good business. Even if you're at the point right now where you're like, Mike, I'm a solopreneur. I don't have anyone else who works for me or with me or anything. Still read traction. It will really help you set up a great foundation for when you have that seven figure company. Yeah, I completely agree. I run all of my businesses on traction. They even have meeting um, templates, ways to run meetings, and they have a whole series of books. And so there's a there is one book, I forget the name of it, but it's a very entry level to the EOS system. And I think it might even be called what the heck is EOS or something like that. Do you have it? Do you have it of over there? Of course. Yes. I had my whole team read this. Yes. What the so, heck is EOS? Yeah. So good. So good. And so what you can do is whenever you hire someone onto your team, send them a copy of that. If they're if they're in the Philippines and you can send them an, either the Audible version or you could send them a PDF or something like that, the Kindle version. But that helps to set some expectations of, oh, this is how our company is run. And it's broken down in a way that's really easy for people to understand. So that is a fantastic resource in this whole EOS traction system. I cannot stress how important something like this is in your business. Yes. And this is so important for any business. This is not like real estate specific. If you're in business, you should read traction. You heard Kendall say it. He runs all three of his businesses off of traction. It is so helpful for anything that you're in. Absolutely. All that stuff about KPIs, key performance indicators, all of that that's all from the EOS traction model. Yes, it's powerful. So with that too, other things I do on my team is I celebrate my team. I celebrate their achievements and their growth. I think this is huge. So I love to celebrate milestones. Everyone on my team knows this. My EA puts it on my calendar for everything going on, whether it's work anniversaries, birthdays, and year-end achievements. So what I love about this is, again, it just creates a great culture. You should be rewarded. If you worked for me for a year, you should get a cake. You should get a card. You should get some flowers. If it's your birthday, I want you to know I care it's your birthday. When you hop on Zoom, we're all going to sing happy birthday to you, but I'm going to send you an extra 50 or or $100, maybe buy you a video game you want, things like that. On the right side of the screen right now, and for those of you listening, I'll fill you in, you see a beautiful bouquet of flowers and a cake and a nice little card. All of this was actually delivered to my team. We see another one going on here. We have another bouquet of flowers, some nice chocolates, okay? A nice little card there. And the last one as well, very similar, same thing, okay? This is what I send to my team. Now, if you're thinking, Mike, how in the world do you send flowers and cakes and things like that to your team when they're in another country? I will tell you, you gotta have more than one employee. I could not do this if I did not have other employees because I have no idea where they get this from because <laughs> I have tried to order flowers and cakes before for employees and I'm running around in circles. You'd be amazed at how hard it is to do that in Pakistan when you live here in the US or in the Philippines when you live here in the US and other people's addresses are just wild. But if you have more than one person on your team and they also live in that same country, put them in charge of it. It is so easy. It's as easy as you just going to pick up some McDonald's. So- Keep that in mind. This is huge. They love to show this off to their friends. I have a lot of them take pictures of this and post it on their social media. They're like, look what my boss sent me. I love working for this company and everything else. So I think this is really a great way to help with retention and show them that you care about them. And hopefully you do care about them because I really care about my team. Another thing too is bonuses. So I talked before about this on commission. It sounds like Kendall and I are very similar in how we structure this, but I do quarterly bonuses and a year end bonus as well. And this is a way to say, great job. Now my quarterly bonuses, if you're wondering how I structure them, what I used to do for my team is I would actually give everyone on my team an extra 50 or hundred dollars when we sold a property or as well as when we got one under contract. The issue with that is before you knew it, everything was a great buy. 
they bring a property to me and they say, oh, you can buy this. You can buy this for 40,000. It'll sell for a hundred thousand. And I'm looking at the comps and I'm like, okay, one property sold for a hundred thousand in 2007. Everything else around here is sold for 20,000. What makes you think this is a good purchase? But of course my team, they want the extra 50 to hundred dollar bonus for getting something signed. So eventually I got rid of that model because we did not have alignment with that. So what I do now for my team is very simple. They share 5% of net profit at the end of every quarter. For them, this is huge. 5% of net profit for them is as much or more than their salary at times. Okay. I really want my team where it's, look, you can pay the bills. You can keep a roof over your head with your hourly pay. But if you want to build a future, if you want to build a legacy for your kids, this quarterly bonus is going to do it. What would your life look like if you made an extra $20,000 this year? I have them all write that down. We make a vision board. Everybody on the team sees it. Everybody on the team understands what everybody else would do with their year-end bonus and their quarterly bonuses all added up, how it would really change their lives. And I think this is so powerful because A, it aligns them with me. We're all on the same page. We're going in the same direction. The better you can negotiate someone down on price, the better spread we can get on a deal, the more money we all make. B, it lets everybody on their team understand exactly what they're going to do with the money. There's days where I might not feel like coming to work, but I know, hey, I need to come to work today because if we're able to achieve this goal, Kendall, he wants to buy his parents a house. That's huge. Okay. I love doing it because it starts to connect them emotionally to the people around them. And see, the reverse of that too is Kendall can also come to me and be like, Mike, you got to get it together. I want to buy some new musical instruments, man. Like you got to step it up so we can achieve that bonus. By doing this, I did not need to micromanage anymore. My team started managing each other. My texter is now reaching out to my acquisitions manager saying, hey, did you call this person yet? This is a really hot lead. You need to call them. My acquisitions manager reaching out to my due diligence person like, hey, can you hurry this along? What's going on with this? Everybody starts looking after everyone because we're all going in the same direction and they're on the same team. And now they also prioritize deals that matter more. If this deal has a $100,000 spread, my team's going to get to it much quicker than that deal that has a $10,000 spread. And I think this is huge. I know a lot of teams out there, they give a flat fee to their team when they sell a deal or something of $100, but now your team does not care whether this is a $10,000 spread or a $10 million spread because they're getting the same. So I think this is huge. I love this to death. And by making it a quarterly bonus, and my team understands if you leave before the quarter's over, you're not going to get paid this. It also helps with retention, at least for the three months. That is beautiful. I love that. And as a, as visionaries, we're also tasked with getting people to buy into our vision and to share ownership of that vision. And so I love that this supports that in such a powerful and uh, tangible way is that when everyone shares the same vision, now we're all working towards the same thing, which is absolutely just brilliant. That's a great strategy. Yes. Thank you. So another thing I do too is a hundred dollar recruitment incentive. So I do offer a hundred dollar bonus to my team members. If they refer someone else to join the team, once that person has been with the team 90 days. Okay. What I really like about this is people want to work with other people they like. So who better to bring in than someone else they can recommend. What's also nice about this is they will also be on that person a lot more. Hey, Kendall, you got to get it together, man. I brought you in. You're starting to make me look bad. So they will also take care of each other that way. It's a nice way to give them an incentive. It's a nice way to say, hey, let's grow our family. Let's work with people we like being around. And it's a good way for them to start managing that new person coming in also. So this is another small thing I do for my team. And this way too, I don't have to listen to presentations like this on how to hire people. I can just say, hey, team, we got to fill this role. Can you find somebody? And it's great. And they can sometimes find people way cheaper than you're going to be able to find because they're friends with them. They go to church with them. They do other things with them. So let them bring in their own friends and family. I think it's a great deal. Yeah, that's so good. And the other thing that I love about that is the people in your company know what the dynamic is, what the atmosphere is like. And so they'll know if someone is a good fit or not, right? More than you will know from just an interview or from personality tests or even all the wonderful tools that we have in place. 
like someone that knows them in their daily lives will have such a better insight as to if they would be a good fit for the team. A hundred percent. Love this. Love so this. Important. So with that too, I do have to say, I actually don't have a real estate team. I got a family. I love my family. I do call them my family. They call each other their family. This is not some mumbo jumbo. This is really how I feel. And we have a nice little family channel where we all drop photos. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Thank you. So those of you tuning in, these are actually just tons of pictures of my team, whether we're on Zoom. One person is here in the States. I actually got to see her one time, only time I met her in person ever. Another person is from Pakistan. She's in her traditional wardrobe that she told me what it was called, but I forgot. Our friend Joyce up there in the top middle. She's actually at a huge Filipino concert. And then you actually see Santa Claus in the top left corner. And Santa Claus is actually me because they like to Photoshop and put <laughs> weird things of me sometimes and post it on our Discord channel. I so, love this. I love this. So good. Yes. We have a ton of fun. I think it's important. We share everything. All of this is in our local Discord, Slack, whatever you'd like to call it. So with that too, last thing I will say is I do have a free mentorship program. This is nothing like Kindle's paid program because Kindle's a real coach. I'm just a guy who has some crazy ideas. But with that being said, when I say free mentorship, it's almost free. What I mean by that is I do like to empower my VAs and give them American VAs. So if you are interested in doing something like this, Kindle, this actually started from the last podcast I was on with you, man. And I got some amazing people in there. We oh, good. People, oh, it's incredible. We have people that used to be in the house wholesaling space. We have people that used to do really small land deals. Now they're doing ginormous land deals. And we have people that are brand new in the land space. We all come together once a week on a Tuesday evening and we just talk shop. Sometimes I'll do a little presentation like this. Sometimes we'll just do a little round table. It's not really to get me one-on-one -on -one. any other times. I'm not going to give you any videos to watch later on your own. It's not going to teach you how to do the whole business. Definitely take a real class. Definitely hit up Kindle for that. But if you do want some free mentorship and you don't mind my executive assistant reaching out to you and saying, hey, Brian, can you figure out what this property is worth and call some realtors? Then feel free to email me at meet, M-E-E-T, at landbh.com. Or you can text me at 813-773-5631. And with that, anybody got any questions? Love this. Oh my gosh, there's so many great things here. And, and one of the things I love so much that you mentioned is that they are family and he, treat your virtual assistants as people. Alicia Jarrett, she we had a conversation and she is a big proponent of don't call them VAs. If you have certain roles in your company, call them by that role, right? So they're not just a VA. It's not just a term that you're throwing around. It's they are our acquisition specialists. They are our lead manager. Give them titles because that helps people as well to have some, some pride and also feel like they're part of a larger team, which is what I think most people really love. I also love the photos. My gosh, that's so cool. One of the things that I found is that for the longest time when I had a virtual assistant team, because of the nature of virtual assistants and because it can be so remote, we rarely, like we would have like quarterly meetings, but then that was it. Like we would, we, everything was done on Slack because you can run a business that way. You send me this, I'll send you this. But it wasn't until we started daily meetings with cameras on where I could see your face and you can see my face and we realize we're all people and we're all connecting. And that's when we saw things really skyrocket in our business. And I cannot stress that enough. I love that the family photo thing. I am definitely starting that today. We're going to have a family channel, but so many fantastic things. Thank you guys so much, Mike. This has been an absolute joy. I've gotten so many valuable nuggets that I can't wait to incorporate into my business. I hope everyone else got value. Thank you for being here on the call, everyone, and for supporting us and hanging out with us this Thursday. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Have a great one. We'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, be safe, take care, and catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you're interested in hearing from other six and seven figure land flippers about how they built and run their businesses, then check out my group, Only Land Fans, where I do a live interview each week inside the group. You can grab that link at the description below. 
Until then, be great, have a great week, and catch you in the next one.